Hey, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Profit Points. And we are going to talk to a business banker today and understand exactly what happens in commercial banking and some of the pros and cons and things that we need to keep an eye out for as small business owners. And as you know, Profit Points is a podcast for the small business owner to hear about business topics as well as learn from industry leaders and other professionals. So Sean, take it away introducing our guest today. Yeah, today uh, we have the, pre the privilege of having Joe Berquist with Harleysville National Bank as uh, as as our guest to talk about you know commercial banking and and his experience and uh, you know what kind of value uh, you know a commercial banker can bring to your small business. So thanks, welcome, Joe. We appreciate you joining yeah, us. Welcome. No, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you both having me on, and uh, definitely a, a conversation I love to talk about is you know small, small businesses <laughs> all day long. Yeah. Um, so, where, where, you know, where would you two like to start? Anything in particular you you well, tell you us go a little into, bit uh, about your background and um, you know your history working with small businesses. Sure. So I've been in banking for 23 years. Uh, I basically started my career with uh, a, a bank called Commerce Bank, uh, which is now TD Bank. That guy, they got bought by uh, TD back in 2007. Uh, I started working for them in 2000 and worked for them for basically about eight years. Uh, and I, I worked, I started out working for them basically in the branches. And then I became what you call a credit analyst doing uh, underwriting of all types of commercial loans. Uh, I worked for them in an underwriting capacity and in a number of different specialized departments. I kind of started out doing loans uh, from like a couple hundred thousand up to uh, about 10 million. And then I went into real estate lending where I got some experience doing track home development and a uh, very large construction rent, like, you know, kind of like mall renovation type deals. Right. Uh, then I worked in, in middle market um, underwriting for a little while, re you know, really doing those uh, kind of larger, you know, fifty, hundred million dollar type uh, transactions, and and did that for a little bit, and then I actually had a really interesting experience, which you know might even be a great conversation for another time, where mm. I went down and worked in what they call, I they had created a a new center called the Small Business development and credit center where they basically credit scored loans for small business owners up to $250,000. And it was a, a really great, really unique mm -hmm. uh, experience. We worked with a company who came in and created a, a totally customized software package for us to basically credit score loans. Um, and that was a, that was a great experience being able to work with that, that uh, outside vendor to kind of create that, that program and how, how you would credit score the small business, um, all the different reports, uh, you know, from, um, um, uh, what am I thinking of DNB and there's just the credit reports, all the other things mm -hmm. that would kind of get pulled into that program and how they would put that together. So that was a, a very interesting experience. And then after that, I became a lender and, uh, basically was, was doing all of your, your kind of typical community lending, um, you know, basically commercial mortgages, lines of credits, term loans, uh, letters of credits, ACHs, all of the typical products and things that would that would be a very you know normal uh, type product lineup that a bank would offer to small business customers today, um, and and basically worked on. Uh, early, early off, it was basically a lot of just small business lending. And then I kind of went into small to medium sized lending. Um, and then, and then, uh, after that, I, I changed banks. So it kind of shifted a little bit and I went mm -hmm. to work for a startup bank, a pure startup bank called uh, victory bank, uh, which was located in, in Montgomery County in Pennsylvania. And, uh, they literally, and that was a, that was an adventure. We literally started in a double wide trailer yeah. and, uh, while they were kind of building our building the building. Building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh and so there was there was literally uh uh 12 of us working in uh in a double wide trailer and uh, it was it was quite the uh quite the event anyway, we, uh, we literally uh christmas eve we moved into the the headquarters building and uh so we we're all you know carrying and moving furniture and everything <laughs> Merry on christmas, christmas eve. And it was to uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so it was uh it's quite the uh quite the adventure uh but but uh in in starting with that i mean again you're you're really focusing on small business customers at that right. point um and it was it was in that adventure that basically 
it, right at that moment when we started that, it was 2008, you know, the market had had really collapsed. Not so and, good. and what had happened was, uh, I would say 90% of the banks in our area here around Southeastern PA had just stopped lending. I mean, they were just, they, not only had they stopped lending, they were literally asking some customers to leave the bank. They say, mm-hmm. hey, say, hey, we want, we need, we need you guys to go. And uh, so it was a very unique situation. And, and what happened was, the Small Business Administration, the SBA at that point in time said, hey, we're going to put all these kind of special uh, incentives out there for you to do SBA lending. Or we're going to offer, instead of a 75% guarantee, we're going to offer a 90% guarantee. And we're going to waive all the fees and we're going to do all this and we're going to do all that. And and that was the point where I basically went to the, the bank and said, hey, um, based on all these incentives that they have out there, uh, I think we should really get into SBA lending because – not only is it going to make it easier for us to lend to small business owners, but these these uh, businesses that are basically getting asked, basically shown the door at their bank, this is going to give us the, to go. Yeah, th- and this yeah. is going to give us the ability to to yeah. bring them in the door. And mm-hmm. it was uh, it was a uh, a, a tremendous uh, success. Uh, I mean, we you know we did in in uh, six years. I think we did uh, there. I, I did eighty five SBA loans, and I was I was very mm-hmm. uh, very proud to say that not a single SBA loan went bad. Every single deal that we did was it was a good deal and and did really well for the bank um and and really helped those customers out in a in a in a big way at that moment when you know their you know their bank just you know basically just said say hey, sorry we can't we're just nothing we can really do for you at the end of the moment and um and so you know and and so you know victory bank was sitting there at that moment in time in a very unique situation because we had just opened the doors we had capital to lend we needed to lend money and and then we had all these customers just kind of flooding in because every other the bank in the area was like us. Oh, yeah, we're not we're not making any loans. We're not. Doing yeah. Anything. So were these like uh, large banks that were kind of showing their customers to the door, like some of the the bigger, well known banks didn't want to. It was literally every every size bank, every, every size, size bank. bank. It was it was both it was both banks, big and small. And what you saw was in in the preceding years, from like about 08 till I would say about 2012, 2013, you saw a number of those banks go uh, out of business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and 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 again, we can we could kind of talk about that. We could we, we could do a whole yeah. other podcast just on that <laughs> on banking um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, and on on the the banks that fail in the area. But I I think the the important thing there was that uh, was that you know I had I had gotten a lot of experience in SBA lending. I had basically then developed a, pretty much an SBA department for that bank and ran that and monitored all the SBA loans and did all that stuff in there. So that was kind of it gave me a different uh, uh, take and a different look on lending to small businesses through the SBA program. Uh, and then and then finally I ended up at the bank that I'm at Harleysville Bank where I am at now. Uh, again, sm- focusing on small to mid sized businesses, but my focus here at this bank is really uh, real estate related. Uh, I mean, the the you know ninety percent of what I do here is commercial real estate lending, whether it would be to um, you know owner occupied property or investment property. But we're looking at all property types, and I get into you know a little bit more into construction lending and things like that here. Uh, so again, but uh, but again, you know the you know ninety nine percent of my customers are small business customers. They are yeah. you know one to fifty employees. They have revenue. Revenues up to between probably ten to fifteen million, uh, and that you know that's the typical size company that I'm I'm dealing with day in and day out. Right, and so just so that our listeners understand, um, it, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of times what happens in small businesses, you might start out renting a property and you decide that you want to either buy that property from the current owners or you want to find another property that's good for you. And so in many instances, you are, um, you know, per- finding properties and purchasing commercial real estate for your operating business. And so, um, you know, the two are kind of tied together and it's, you know, always good to kind of work with a banker that's going to be able to handle all of it, you know, not just the real estate purchasing part of it, but, you know, the the business operations side of things and all the needs that um, are required for that as well. Um, And, you know, that's good for like the brick and mortar, but I guess also if you are interested in purchasing real estate as passive income, you know, mm-hmm. if, if it's a, a big deal and, um, you know, we're in a very populated area. Um, and so there's a lot of commercial real estate and opportunities yep. out there. And, um, that is also a form of small business. 
So, right. Well, and, yeah. and I, you know, it's very interesting. I, I think one thing a lot of small business owners, I think they miss is that, you know, like in other words, say you're, you're renting a space and you get focused on, you're like, oh, you know what? I really want to buy this, you know, I, I want to buy this. So I'm kind of building, I have an asset and I'm building equity for myself over a long period of time. You know, I plan on, you know, hopefully maybe, you know, maybe I'm pretty young. I plan on having my company be around for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And, uh, and I want to build, you know, an asset and equity over over time. Well, that, you know, buying a building and having that be your building for your business. I mean, that that's a huge asset and that's a huge part of building wealth and equity for not only yourself, but for your, your company over time. Mm -hmm. um, but, but here's, but here's an interesting thing that I I've seen happen over the years. And that is, you know, business owners, you know, again, I mean, they look at the price tag of, of whatever it is they're buying, and, and that's a very important thing, obviously. But I think a lot of times they just they look at they say, oh, well, uh, here's a, a, a two thousand square foot uh, building. Uh, maybe it was like a, maybe it's like a, what I call like a main street property. Like maybe it was a building that was a house at one time, and now it was converted into office space. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, this will be perfect for me. Uh, but what they miss is like kind of the, um, excuse me, uh, kind of the extra units, the extra passive income that can be earned from having multiple units. Oh, yeah. yeah. So having a, a property that is not just housing your business operations, but also is being rented out potentially to other offices, other businesses, um, or even a piece that might be residential, right, that you would want to uh, kind of rent out as well. That's really interesting. And the opportunity there to be able to do that. If you could find like a mixed use building that has office space on the first floor and maybe has, you know, two, three apartments above it, that can provide some some a great um, extra income for you as you're mm -hmm. as you're, you know, um, just, you know, taking that money back in every month. Helps um, pay for the mortgage mm -hmm. um, and um, not all of the burden falls on the operating company as much, um, you know, and that can help alleviate some of that cash flow problem. Exactly. Or, you know, or you could find a, an office building uh, that, you know, maybe is, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, but maybe uh, to, to use a good example, maybe file like an 8,000 square foot office building and maybe it's two floors, you know, 4,000 square foot on each building. And uh, maybe you take the top floor, rent out the you know, rent out the bottom floor. And again, you're creating that passive income situation where, yep. you know, you've got money coming in that's helping you pay that mortgage, helping you uh, pay that down, pay that debt down a lot faster. And yeah. those, those to me are uh, my favorite situations because, you know, because again, you never know what's going to happen over time. You know, maybe, you mm -hmm. know, maybe your business, maybe you, maybe you hit a patch where, you know, your business is struggling a little bit and, and revenues are declining or, or maybe you hit, you know, maybe the economy uh, isn't going so great for, you know, for a year or two. Um, you know, because let's face it. I mean, if you're in business for for 30 years, 40 years, you're gonna you're gonna you know, have you're some gonna, ups and have, downs. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have some ups and downs. You're gonna face some. You're gonna face some uh, some lean times. So, um, so I like I said, I I like that idea of being able to have uh, kind of that extra income or or be able to generate that that extra passive income when it comes to when you know, when it comes to real estate. Um, so. Hopefully, you know, some small business owners will 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 think about that if they're if they're in kind of the early stages of their company and they're just growing and, and they're renting right now and they're thinking about what they're going to do in the future. Hopefully that'll be some good food for thought for, you know, for them to kind of think about as they as they go as they go forward. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So the different banks that um, are out there, you know, we have big huge banks that people work with as small business owners. And then we have little tiny credit unions that small businesses work with. Is there anything that you could, any advice that you could give to the small business owner when they're thinking about what bank to go with? The size of the bank really does make a difference, I think. Um, and I, in my experience, some small business owners that have, um, you know, got into banks that just didn't fit their needs up front. So it would be like, um, you know, if they needed merchant services or if they needed different types of accounts and there, the fees weren't great um, as, on those types of accounts, um, lines of credit, as well as, um, you know, uh, other types of loans. Um, some banks just don't work well with small businesses. 
Yeah, well, I so here here's another here's another take I'll have on it. And this this might be something that you, you haven't really thought of is that you know um the bigger banks, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they're kind of notorious for they'll throw out these rate deals, you know. Um, like for example, they'll they'll put a rate special out there in a market and they'll say, Oh, okay, we're you know, we're gonna offer these lines of credit, say uh, you know, hundred thousand and under. And we'll do it at prime minus one. And, uh, you know, if you hop in and take this now and, you know, we won't really have collateral on that line of credit, whatnot. And and that's what they they do to to try to bring in a lot of business, you know, and a a lot of small business owners really, you know, especially if they're if it's a young business. I mean, they'll they'll kind of jump after that real quick. You know, what I try to explain to them is that. There's a trade off in everything. So, yeah. you know, you you might take that deal, you might get that money that you need, but, you know, what's the customer service going to be like? You know, what, you know, when you need to get through, when you need to call them, when you need something, you know, are you going to sit on an automated phone for 45 minutes trying to get through? Are you going to, are you going to so have to talk to, you yeah. know, three people? Are you going to get assigned to a relationship person, but then that relationship person is going to change every year? You know, like mm-hmm. almost literally every year, you're going to have a different person. Mm-hmm. And then you got to kind of start that, you know, process over all over again, you know, getting to know that person and everything else. Um, and, you know, that's the that's the big thing. I think what uh, what most community banks around the, the U.S. offer is that is is that really that that true sense of relationship banking where, you know, yeah, your average community bank, they can't always throw the best deal out there because, you know, they're, mm-hmm. the, you know, again, they're like every other small business. They're trying to they're trying to keep their lights on and make money. And, uh, you know, just like every business is, is doing out there. Right. And um, I, I just think that uh, that's something that really you really need to take into consideration. Like, what do you you know, what are you really hoping to get out of this at the end of the day? Yeah. But when yeah. you're talking about a, a relationship uh, with with a bank, Joe, what um, you know, what kind of qualities uh, for for that relationship? What what kind of value does that bring? Is it is it, is it able? Are they? Is it a business able to get a loan through faster or um, kind of cut through some of that red tape? Or is it just, um, you know, just like any other uh, professional relationship where you just well, have a trust with the person? I think the best example of that is the PPP loans that we that we, you know, just went through. Right. Um, you know, we had I mean, we did uh, here. Um, we did it probably as many as a lot of other banks around the country did it. But we did basically 400 and. Uh, I forget the exact number. But it was it was about 500 PPP loans totaling out about 40 million dollars in, mm-hmm. in in total in total aggregate lending. Um, and you know, and we and we you know we made those out to our customers, and uh, and and again, having that relationship with us at the bank was the difference between getting that and not getting that. Absolutely. And I, and I can't even tell you. I, I got really um, I got some truly heartbreaking phone calls from people who were literally, you know, begging me like, you know, oh, hey, you know, I'm I'm with this big bank or I'm with that big bank. And I, I put my application in and, and and I haven't heard anything for two months and I don't know oh, what's geez. going on and I, I can't get anybody on the phone. And all I have to go to is this I've online portal. And, um, you know, and they're saying, oh, you know, if, if I if I pull my loan out, can I come apply with you? And. And, you know, and we had made a decision very early on that we were just going to lend to our, you know, we were just going to make PPP Do loans to our existing, mm-hmm. for our existing customers. And, and again, therein lies the the value of the relationship. You know, if you have the relationship with the bank, you got the loan, it was no problem. Um, and, and, and literally every customer that we had that wanted a PPP loan got a PPP loan, you know, yeah. Yeah, and we, we, you know, it was very hard. Uh, we found a way we, you know, we had a lot of nights uh, for a couple months that, that I mean, I, I personally was was sitting here at the bank till about 11 o'clock at night, every night for for a couple months trying to get it through, trying mm-hmm. to get try, yeah, trying to get these things done. And uh, and but but we did it. You know, we did it. We we, yeah. we got them done. And and I think that, um, you know, everybody was super grateful for that. And I think that that's a real, you know, great example there of the power of 
you know, what mm-hmm. happens when you have that banking relationship. Absolutely. I, I, I've had clients that were in that same position. They were basically um, out there working with big banks. Then the pandemic hit um, and they could not, for the life of them, get their PPP loans. And it brought to light the issues that people are having with large banks, especially the small business owner. And so, you know, they ended up pulling most of their things from these large banks and going right to a small bank that could provide them better customer service, better relationships, um, have somebody to actually call um, when, you know, something isn't going right. And, or in, you know, if they're in need of something, and then if something changes in the world or changes in rates and, you know, someone's personally reaching out to you on these things um, can really be a huge benefit to a small business owner. But I, I think also too, you know, and, and Sean, you had talked about this is that, is it, you know, the, I think the real magic is in building the relationship over time. It's, 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 it's something that gets developed over the course of a number of years. Yeah. You, know, you get, you, you know, you get to, I get to know a customer, I get to know kind of how their company operates, how it runs um, the people that work there, their, you know, their employees that work there for them. Um, how they operate year in and year out. And that understanding is critical for when, you know, somebody comes back in and says, hey, um, I want to borrow money for this, that, or the other thing. Maybe I need to buy a real piece of, a real expensive piece of equipment. Uh, Maybe I need, you know, maybe we have this great business opportunity and we have the opportunity to acquire another company or another book of business. And, um, and that's, and then that's where, you know, my bosses, um, you know, be you know, my chief credit officer, my chief lending officer, our board of directors, like that's, that's where they're really leaning on me at that point to basically say, Joe, you know, you, you know, you have a, a deep understanding of this company, you know, to, you know, d- does this, does this all this, you know, is all this good? Is it normal? Is it okay? Like, you know, do you, do you believe that, that all this is going to be a good thing for this company at the end of the day? And, and then that's where, you know, I say, yes, absolutely. And then that's the difference between getting the loan and and not getting the loan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, can you make or break it (laughs) yeah because it's it's not it's not all about the numbers at the end of the day the numbers are always critical always important but it's not necessarily all about that interesting awesome yeah i mean you you, the the ppp loan uh situation is is exactly the 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 type of thing that that differentiates a small or, or a relationship uh with us with a commercial bank um in 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 providing value i it, we, michelle said it you know, i had clients in the same situation as well sitting there for like who, however long waiting for these banks to get their portal together to be able to apply and you know time is like is is ticking on 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 these they have bills to pay mm-hmm. they have employees they need to retain um there's there's a lot of lot of issues that um you know smaller banks were able to cut through that to, to, yeah. to get them their loans quicker. Well, one of the things that we say to our clients is build these relationships with the banker ahead of time before there's a fire, right? Mm-hmm. Before mm-hmm. you um, need a line of credit, build your relationship with your banker, have the line of credit in place so yeah. that when and if there's always going to be instances where something's going to change, you know, something in your business is going to change or there's going to be an opportunity and you need to act fast. Um, And it may be for a short period. It might be for something that's longer, but to have these things in place prior to those problems coming up or prior to those opportunities kind of coming to fruition, it will help you so much in the long term. So, you know, and, and a couple other things I, I just wanted before they before I forget, before these things go out of my mind. So, um, again, coming back to the size of your company. So, I mean, if you if you, you know, if you're a company that's got, you know, I don't know, even, you know, if you got 30, 40, 50 million in revenue size, um, you know, you might have to go to a larger bank because yeah. you might it, it might realistically become a thing where you outgrow that smaller bank um or that or you know even that smaller credit union you might be doing business with um and it, it's a it could be a very real thing i've i've had a number of clients it's happened with you know i've had people outgrow me and and, and that's fine it's it's like hey i'm happy for you but mm-hmm. you know now you you know you're you're going to need to go on to to a bigger bank um but i also but there's also the theory too of like not having all your eggs in one basket you know and sometimes mm-hmm. i tell people you know hey look 
even if you don't want like a full uh, relationship with me, it might not be a bad idea just to open up and, and, you know, keep a couple of accounts here or whatever, because you just, you know, you never know. I mean, you never, you never know what happens, you, you know, know, down the road. And, um, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of people think, and I say this all the time, a lot of people think a bank is a bank is a bank. And it, that's, that's so not true. Mm -hmm. um, banks have personalities just like people do. And, you know, there are some banks that are big on some things and not on others. You know, there are some banks that are big time residential mortgage lenders. And there are some banks that really don't do any more residential mortgage lending. There are some banks that are huge uh, on commercial lending and don't really do any residential lending. Uh, there are some banks that are big uh, consumer banks and they do a lot of uh, consumer lending and they, they specialize in auto loans and all this, all, all different kinds of uh, product lines there. And, and so, you, you know, you have to do a little bit of research on the bank to kind of figure out like, okay, is this the, is this the best bank for me? Is this a bank? If you're a small business owner, what you want to know is, is this a commercial bank? Do they do a lot of commercial lending? And, and, and is there, do they have a real focus on small business owners? You know, those are the key yeah. kind of questions that you should be, be asking when you're looking at, at any, at any bank, you know, and, um and, Fair and I don't point. think it, and I don't think it, it hurts to ask around, you know, ask around the, uh, the area. I mean, if it's, if they're, if they're a great community bank, uh, they're going to have a good reputation in the local market. And if you talk, start talking to some other, other local business owners, they'll, they'll tell you. They'll they like, will oh, tell oh, you. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, I mean, besides knocking on, on doors to banks and, and, and maybe, you know, some other business owners, is there other, any other resources that people can go to, to kind of see what banks, um, you know, offer like you know, maybe a chamber of commerce or uh, something like that. Um, yeah, I don't. You know, I you know that's a great question, Sean. I don't know that like there is a kind of a one single place you could go to where you could find <laughs> that like nice, all that. But... Yeah, I mean, yeah, would, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, but no, I, I don't know that that's necessarily out there. I mean, wh where I would say that that might really come in handy, like you know, again, if you go to the. Uh, chamber of commerce and you start asking around saying hey guys what are some of the banks you deal with uh who, who do you do does anybody you recommend like that mm -hmm. that could certainly be helpful and you could certainly get some good information from them there yeah okay. great point great point yeah. well we thank you for joining us today um on our podcast and um we really learned a lot about you know the different ways banks can help you and the benefits of creating those relationships and um we thank you for all your expertise. Oh, well, thank yeah. you so much. And, and I'll tell you what, if, if you both would like me to come back and talk about uh, maybe just the, the commercial loan process, uh, yeah. applying for a commercial loan, what are the financial information that you need and how, you know, how that process should unfold, how long it should take, uh, all that kind of stuff. If you, if that's something that would interest you both, I'd be happy to come that's back. That's awesome. And, and so now we're going to have to schedule so. the next podcast. That's, yeah, awesome. right. <laughs> that's right. It'd be, it'd be a series with Joe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's great information, really helpful for all of our listeners out there. So thanks so much, Joe, for joining us today. Perfect. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. For more information on business topics such as this, visit moderncpaonline.com and consider our masterclass at moderncpaonline.com slash masterclass to get your free 24-hour access pass to learn the three big financial mistakes new business owners make and what to do next. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos and leave a like or a comment below if you have further questions.